Okay, let's take a look at number 11 from homework 7. This is a question that's asking us about an object moving along the y-axis. It gives us a function, and then it asks us some questions about average and instantaneous velocity. Now the secret here is you've actually done this before in this homework, it just wasn't worded in terms of average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Um, it was worded in terms of average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. So it's just a different way of asking for the same thing. So the function they're giving me, and yours might differ just a little bit, um, or the numbers that they're asking you to plug in might differ just a little bit. But my function is f of x equals x squared plus x. And for part a, they're asking us for the average velocity and in my case it's average velocity so average velocity for x changing from negative 1 to 2 okay so that's what they're asking for average velocity and so if I asked you what the average rate of change was we already have a formula for that and what that was going to be was f of 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2 minus negative 1. Taking the ending point and the starting point and I'm setting up this formula here. What it was when it ended minus what it was when it started divided by the ending x value and the beginning x value, or minus the beginning x value, sorry. So this is the formula that we need to fill out. What I like to do, instead of trying to plug everything in, I think it's easier to find the pieces first and then put them back together. So I'm going to leave an equal sign for me to put all of the pieces back together here. But what I need to find first is f of 2. So for f of 2, I just plug a 2 in everywhere there was an x in my original function. So I'm going to get 2 squared plus 2. So f of 2 equals, well, that's 4 plus 2 and that's 6. So for f of 2, I can put in a 6. Now I need to find f of negative 1. So I do the same thing. f of negative 1, plugging the negative 1 into my original f of x. So I'm going to get negative 1 squared plus negative 1. Well, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. So I get 6 minus 0, and then 2 minus negative 1 is going to be 3, so my answer here is going to be 6 over 3, and if I simplify that, that's going to be 2. So the answer for part A, in my case, is 2. Now your numbers might be different, but you're going to do the same thing. Whatever the end point is, you're going to plug that in to your f of x. And then you're going to plug in whatever the beginning point is into your f of x. You're going to subtract those two and put them over the beginning x value minus the ending x, or the <laughs> ending x value minus the beginning x value. And then when everything's simplified, you're going to get the answer. So now what we need is uh, to find the average velocity in part b. They're asking for the average velocity for x changing from negative 1 to negative 1 plus h. So this is the exact same thing except I'm going to be plugging in negative 1 plus h instead of 2. I already have all of the information I need for negative 1 so what I need to do is this negative 1 plus h. So let me set up my formula first because it's still the same idea. I need f of the end point, so that's f of negative 1 plus h minus f of the beginning point all over the end point minus the beginning point. So I'm just plugging in the values they gave me into this formula here. And then I have to fill in the blanks. Now luckily I have most of what I need here. I've got f of negative 1 so I can actually kind of start filling this in. f of negative 1 was 0 so I can put that there. Uh, negative 1 plus h minus negative 1. So negative 1 plus 1, those are going to cancel. That's just going to leave an h in the denominator. So all I'm missing is this f of 1 plus h. So let's find that. f of 1 plus h 
Well, I plug in 1 plus h into my formula here. I'm sorry, negative 1 plus h. Uh, so negative 1 plus h squared plus negative 1 plus h. You need to be a little bit careful with your algebra here because we've got some negative signs floating around. But all in all, this isn't too hard to, uh, to figure out. So if you FOIL this guy out, you're going to get 1 minus 2h plus h squared, then plus a negative 1, that's going to be minus 1 plus h. And if I simplify that, well, my 1 minus 1 cancels. Minus 2h plus h, that's just going to be a negative h plus h squared. OK? So that's what goes in here, negative h plus h squared minus 0 over h. Simplify that, so we're canceling out h's. We're going to get negative 1 plus h, and the h cancels out, so actually negative 1 plus h is our answer. And all I did here is I subtract, or I canceled this h with that h, this h with one of those h's, and that gave me negative 1 plus h. If you're not sure about the algebra, go see someone in office hours, come see me, um, and we can go over exactly how we got to that. But your second answer is going to be negative 1 plus h. That's what they're looking for. Third answer, this one's actually pretty easy. Um, they're asking for the instantaneous velocity at the uh, negative 1 seconds. Um, so what they're asking is just the limit as h approaches 0 of this last thing that we found, negative 1 plus h. Well, this is as simple as it can get, so we know from when we were doing our limits a few sections ago that all I have to do is plug a 0 in for h. So I'm going to get negative 1 plus 0, which is negative 1. And so my final answer for part C is going to be negative 1. So let me walk you through this again one more time. Um, it's a word problem, so it throws you off because there's lots of extra stuff going on. They're asking you questions in different ways. But the important thing to take away from this is average velocity is going to be the same as average rate of change if they were just giving you two points on a line. So the formula we have is f of the endpoint minus f of the starting point over the endpoint minus the starting point. And to figure that out, I just plugged those values into my original function, sort of filled in the blanks up here, and simplified, and that gave me my average velocity over that time period that they were asking for when it was changing from negative 1 to 2. So that was 2. The second question asked for average velocity, but they asked it for a different interval, where we were going from negative 1 to negative 1 plus h. So I already had the information that I needed for negative 1. The only piece of the puzzle that I didn't have here was the f of negative 1 plus h. So I figured that out by plugging negative 1 plus h into my original function. When I did that, this is what I came up with. I was able to cancel some h's. That left me with negative 1 plus h for my average velocity from negative 1 to negative 1 plus h. Um, do not think that it's always going to work out that way, though, because for part B, your answer might not necessarily be exactly this. So this just happened to be kind of a freak, freak thing that happened here that doesn't always happen. Uh, but in this case, it did turn out to be negative 1 plus h. And then for part C, we just needed to take the limit as h approached 0. Let me make that look a little bit more like an h here. Uh, h approached 0 of what we found in part B. So I plugged in a 0 for my h, and that left me with negative 1. And that was the answer. And so that is a look at finding average velocity and finding instantaneous velocity using some of the formulas that they've given us in section 2.4.